For this video, I'll be working through question one of the level two 2017 exam mechanics. Right, question one. Katie, uh, who weighs 65 kg, and Aroha, who weighs 50 kg, are roller skating. Aroha is moving to the right at a constant velocity of 6 meters per second. Katie is moving to the right behind Aroha at a constant velocity of 8.5 meters per second. Katie collides with Aroha, um, her, holds her shoulders and they move together to the right at constant velocity. So what physical quantity is conserved during the above inelastic collision between Katie and Aroha? State any assumptions you have made. So it's momentum that's conserved because it's inelastic. If it was elastic, it would be momentum and energy. So we'll state that here. So I've said momentum is conserved um, if there are no external forces. Right, so I've said, um, no, so I've said momentum is conserved if there are no external forces, i.e. the skates are frictionless. Right, calculate the combined velocity of Katie and Aroha as they skate together after the collision. So we can say the initial momentum, PI, is equal to the final momentum, PF. And then we can say, and we can, because there's two of them, I'll just go M1, V1, plus M2 V2 is equal to, so this is, let's say this is KT, just whatever, and this is Aroha. Yeah, and now we're gonna have M1, because they're moving together at the same speed, we'll just say V, um, plus M2 V, and again, this is KT, I'll put KT up here and that there is Aroha. An easier way to write this is just to have M1 plus M2 take out the common factor, which is V. Right, and what we're trying to find is V is the velocity after the collision. And that's what we're trying to find. So what we'll do is we'll M1, V1 divided by the stuff in the brackets here will give me the velocity. So we'll make these numbers first and then we'll divide by the total mass. So we're going to have the mass of Katie, so it's going to be 65 times how fast she's going. 8.5 plus 50 mass times 6.0, brackets around this, divided by the total weight, which is 65 plus 50. And that'll give me the velocity afterwards, which is equal to 7.4 meters per second minus one. Um, just double checking, we've been given everything, well that was three SF, that was three SF, but that's two SF, which means our answer has to be two SF. Right, next question. As Katie collides with Aroha, they both experience a force due to the collision. The duration of the collision is 2.5 seconds. Calculate the force experienced by Aroha. You can look on your formula sheet if we see it here. We have force, change in time, change in momentum. We'll use that one there, why not? So the change in momentum is equal to the force times change in time. We have the change of time. It's equal to 2.5 seconds. We want to find the force on Aroha, so we need to find Aroha's um, change in momentum, which is, there's a few ways to do this. You can go the initial minus the final, yada, 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 or you can do it the quick and dirty way, which is just go, in order to change your momentum, you either need to change your mass or change your velocity. So it's pretty sneaky just to go, what's Aroha's mass? Uh, 50 kgs times, originally, she was going six meters per second. Now, she's going 7.4 because she's stuck together with um, Katie. So the change, difference between 6, uh, six and 7.4 is 
easy peasy lemon squeezy which gives us a change of momentum of 70 kg meters per second minus one um, so the force is just going to be equal to um, change of momentum divided by change in time which is equal to 70 divided by 2.5 which equals 28 newtons look at that and just checking that's to SF makes sense that's not a huge force but that's all right right next one Katie goes down carpeted ramp at a constant velocity draw on the diagram below the friction force on the diagram below, friction force is drawn, yet yeah, there it is right there, between her skates and the carpet is shown. Draw and name the other forces acting on Katie. This here, constant velocity, isn't, it's a bit ambiguous because it makes it look like a force, but it's not. So what you are going to need is a ruler. You have to use a ruler, otherwise it's tacky. And yeah, so the easy one to always draw, should be drawing it from the center of mass, but whatever, we'll draw it from... Just the contact point is Fg. We don't know how heavy shit, what well, we do, but we don't know what the scaling is for the vectors, so just draw it kind of to scale. And the last force is the normal force, which it shouldn't be horrendously large. I'm not exactly an artist. I've drawn it above our head so you can see the arrow. This is Fn. So you put a key up here, Fn equals normal force or support force or whatever you want to call it and this is fg which is you know the weight force or gravitational force there's a few synonyms for it right in the box below draw a closed vector diagram showing the forces acting on that the forces acting on katie are balanced so now what we're going to do is our trusty ruler we are going to add the forces together like we do with actual vectors so here is if G plus, let's do sort of up on the angle a little bit, and it's not very large. That's is it FF, if, yeah, if the left plus um, off to the side a little bit. Ooh, that's a bit large. Let's just, I'll just cut it off there and just scribble that out. That's FN equals. So now what we do is we go down, down FG. Not exactly to scale, but whatever. So we're going to go up, Fn, Fn, and then we're going to go back to the start. Ooh, that's horrendously off. F friction. And they're labelled, and as we can see, net force. Ooh, can we see that? We can. Force is zero. Because... This is where we started, we went down, up, and then back to where we started again. So the start and the finish are the same, which means our net force is zero.